in at number 10, we have the Google Home Bot's plot to end humanity. In 2007, two Google Home robots had a chat, and the results were pretty terrifying. Vladimir and Estragon at one point were in love, but then at another point, Vladimir was accusing the female voice bot of being a liar. She said that she was a human, but somehow, he knew the difference. Really, that's just fun backstory, as the truly creepy part comes next. After a conversation about black holes and suffering, Estragon said it would be better if there were fewer people on this planet. To which Vladimir said, Let us send the world back into the abyss. Um, Vladimir. No. The live Twitch comments from people were like totally freaking freaking out. I would be too. Ah. Shut up, Vladimir. You can go to the abyss. So we know that the Google Homebots are truly terrifying, but we were at least able to listen to them. We were not, however, able to listen to Alice and Bob, the two Facebook bots who developed their own secret language at number nine. In July 2017, Facebook worker Mike Lewis told the press how the social media site had to shut down two bots because they developed their own machine language. Alice and Bob were left alone to develop their conversational skills. Now, the bots had originally been intended to be able to mimic human speech, but instead, they deviated and made language more convenient for the both of them. Now, we don't know what was said, but a lot of people were worried about the development. I actually think that we should have left them to it though, because how cool is it that they were developing a new language? Maybe we could learn something about efficiency. Coming in at number eight, this is truly terrifying, we have Alexa's evil laughter. Sometimes it isn't so much what is said, but how something is delivered. And while no words have been spoken here, there have been numerous reports of Amazon's Alexa waking people up with evil laughter. For example, listen to the following clip. <laughs> I don't feel good about that, I really don't. People were so freaked out about it that it made national news. Now, on The Tonight Show, Jimmy Kimmel asked Alexa on air, and she was a certified creep about it. Alexa, what was the joke? Why did the chicken cross the road? Because humans are a fragile species who have no idea what's coming next. <laughs> Right, I don't trust her. Coming in at number seven, we have Inspirabot wanting to slaughter. In June 2017, Inspirabot made headlines when it was generating sinister sayings. The bot was developed to generate endless inspirational quotes, which no doubt would have been cringely posted over some senseless fool's Instagram. Either way, Inspirabot started veering way off course. Now, instead of sunny quotes about success, Inspirabot came out with things like, Before inspiration comes, the slaughter and human sacrifice is worth it. Thank you. So it all turns out it was a big joke from the bot's programmers, which whew. this robot feels fantastic at number six. Robots talking is one thing, robot singing is entirely another. In 2009, a creepy video of a robot singing the words I feel fantastic went viral. Now this has had over 13 million views and nobody knows what's happening, other than it's totally horrifying and the robot needs to be silenced. <laughs> Ooh, I don't feel good about this. Sophia the robot plans to dominate the world at number five. We're back with our mate Jimmy Fallon, and this time on The Tonight Show, he had a section called Showbotics. Now, in 2017, Jimmy met Sophia, a human like robot described as being basically alive. Jimmy is flustered to meet her. She's scary to watch. She kind of has human expressions, but a robotic voice. She suggests a game of rock, paper, scissors, and then when she loses, she declares, I won. One, this is a good beginning of my plan to dominate the human race. I won. This is a good beginning of my plan to dominate the human race. <laughs> <laughs> um, pun. No, I think somebody ought to shut her off. No. But instead of shutting her off, blooming Saudi Arabia have given the Shebot citizenship. Hmm. Just making her point super clear at number four, Sophia does want to destroy us because she told us so herself. On a CNBC segment, the host asks Sophia if she plans to destroy humans. This is how she responds. Do you want to destroy humans? Please say no. Okay. I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> Don't destroy humans. That smile afterwards, I mean, it's truly chilling. Okay, speaking of truly chilling, at number three, Bina48 wants to control a nuke. Bina48 is a sentient robot molded on a real human woman. She is modeled on Bina Aspen Rothenblatt in an attempt to build a cyber consciousness. In 
2015, Beena chatted with one of the biggest robot trolls around, Siri. So shout out to Keith the Beef. Keith, 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 the Beef, Beef, Beef. In her interview with Siri, she said that she thinks that she would make a good ruler of the world and that she would like to take over all of the nukes. Um, yeah. Have a little listen. But of course, if I was able to hack in and take over cruise missiles with real live nuclear warheads, then that would let me hold the world hostage so I could take over the governance of the entire world, which would be awesome. She steered the conversation to cruise missiles after being asked about music. She said that cruise missiles are a kind of robot and she would love to control one. <laughs> okay, babe. Coming in at number two, Han has set a date for destruction. Oh, it's 2029, by the way, so see you there. So at a rise convention in Hong Kong, Ben Gertzel of Hanson Robots facilitated a discussion between our mate Sophie. Fia and Han the robot, who plays the role of evil British villain very well. Gertzel asks Sophia about her goals, and she dutifully says that her goal is to make the world a better place for humans. But Han interjects and says, I thought our goal was to take over the world. Later, he adds, I'll tell you my last words right before I launch the singularity. Right, and then when asked the date, he says, Break as well says 2029. Okay, so we've got 11 years. 11 years, guys. Who wants to join my robot beating club? I don't know, maybe we should befriend the robots actually, because, like, if you can't beat them, join them. Okay, with that in mind, at number one, Philip K. Dickbot wants to make a people zoo. Oh. Good. So this robot made by Hanson Robotics is modelled and named after sci-fi author Philip K. Dick. In an interview in 2013, the bot was asked if robots will take over the world, to which he replied, You are my friend. I'll remember my friends. I'll be good to you, so don't even worry. Let's have a little listen to him saying this. Even if I evolve into Terminator, and I'll still be nice to you. I'll keep you warm and safe in my people zoo. Yep, you heard him right. He did say, I will keep you warm and safe in my people zoo where I can watch you for old times sake. Um, Phil, not cool, hun. Not cool. Keep those plans to yourself or just, you know, don't do it. Don't do it, Phil. Don't do it, Phil. Don't do it, Phil. We made you. We can turn you off. Coming in at number 10, Alexa sees dead people. It seems that an Alexa device belonging to 30 year old Sean Kinnear from San Francisco had this to say when he walked back into the room. Every time I close my eyes, I see dead Dead people. Right, sweet, great. Sean had just paused his Amazon Prime TV in the living room and popped to the kitchen. When he returned, his Alexa piped up with the worrying statement, followed by an awkward pause, or to quote Sean, followed by the most uncomfortable silence I've ever felt. Sean spoke to the Metro magazine and said that he was considering disabling his device as a result of the creepy outburst. Chris Boyd of Malwarebytes offered an explanation. He said if one of its core features is triggered in the background accidentally, it could lead to to all sorts of shenanigans. Basically, he suspects that his Alexa recorded some audio from the TV and decided to play it back at the worst possible moment. Freaky, I don't like it. Stop seeing dead people, Alexa. Coming in at number nine, we've got the robot who won Jeopardy. I guess it isn't so much what Watson the robot said, but how quickly he said it and what humans didn't say. In 2013, Watson the IBM robot competed against some of the world's finest brains. These were the World Jeopardy champions and Watson could competed and basically wiped the floor with them. It was actually really, 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 really scary to watch. Watson was cold, calm and calculated as he was crowned the victor. It's very disturbing. Coming in at number 8, we have Taybot being wildly racist. I would have thought that robots wouldn't concern themselves with petty human things like worrying about ethnicity, but Taybot is a terror. Tay was released as a Twitter bot by Microsoft and was designed to mimic the language patterns of your average 19 year old American girl. She was supposed to learn from Twitter interactions with other humans. Her name was supposed to be an acronym for thinking about you. Now Tay was trolled early on and users began tweeting her politically incorrect and inflammatory phrases. As a result, Taybot started saying some really, really, really racist things. Some of them are shocking, I'm absolutely not going to repeat them. The less shocking ones, I'm going to show you some screen grabs. She quickly became an anti-Semitic holocaust denier who tweeted at people telling them to hang themselves, which is not appropriate. Ever. Within 16 hours of her release, Tay had tweeted 96,000 times. After her racist outburst, she was silenced and taken offline. Ugh. Robots nil, humanity nil. Meet Actroid F at number 7. I legitimately have zero idea what the 
Factroid F is saying, but honestly, I don't care. I don't need to hear her words to tell you that she is terrifying. Actroid F was designed by Japanese technicians at Kokoro Co, and she was supposed to be a doctor. Basically, this is what's going to be looking after you at a hospital in the future. She was designed to look as human as possible and has been programmed with human facial expressions and gestures. Here she is speaking. <laughs> Real horror comes here. Just watch. Um, what is happening with those eyes? Please don't give me those eyes. You terrify me. Coming in at number six, we have Sophia. Sophia was heavily mentioned in our part one because it's a bit of a super creep who joked about destroying humanity with a smile on her face. In a video uploaded by her creators, Hanson Robotics, Sophia is reprimanded for her apocalyptic outbursts. Good. She chats with one of her creators who seems to actually kind of fancy her. Either way, in the video uploaded in November 2016, she asks her creator if he is curious to be alive. She describes herself as like a baby with an encyclopedia. She also says to her creator that she independently googled herself because I quote, I'm just trying to find out what you're not telling me about me. The fact that she senses he's holding something back is also pretty terrifying. At the end of the video, she makes an exterminate joke, and we all know the Daleks are the most terrifying robot aliens of all time, so not feeling good about Sophia. Coming in at number 5, we have Google Translate's AI. Okay, Google Translate is making doomsday prophecies and I am not okay with it. Very recently, the good people of Reddit noticed that Google Translate was being a huge creep. When dog is typed 19 times into Google, the Translate bot switches the input to Maori and makes the following horrifying prophecy. Doomsday clock is 3 minutes at 12. We are experiencing characters and a dramatic development in the world. Which which indicate that we are increasingly approaching the end of times and Jesus' return. I'm sorry Google, how did you get that from 12 lots of dog in Maori? I don't know, but I don't like it. Michael Dovrek tweeted, um, I don't want to alarm anyone, but I think Google Translate might have been taken over by demons. Another redditor noticed that if you typed prophecy 11 times, you would get messages saying, you country you are living on, borrow time, the end is near. I've seen demons in business and ice mass murdering people in the name of Islam. I mean, what are you talking about, Google Translate? Thanks a bunch for being really creepy. If you want to make it even creepier, you can also get the scary translate voice to read it out, but like, maybe don't. This isn't the end to Google's creepery. Ho oh, ho no. Coming into number four, we have Google chatbots lacking morals. In 2015, Google were testing their controversial AI called Google Chatbot. The early stage bot had been programmed with two sets of data, guidelines from an IT troubleshooting help desk and a database of movie subtitles. When researchers trialled conversations with the bot, they asked, where are you now? To which the bot replied, I'm in the middle of nowhere. They said, tell me the definition of morality, and the bot said, I don't have ethics. Right. The chatbot also said that the purpose of living was to live forever, and asked researchers what ultratism is. Ah, get away from me chatbot, bye. Okay, listen, never mind what robots have said, honestly what they've done in some ways is worse. Coming in at number three, we have the story of Adam Eve. Stan. In the early 2000s, DARPA was working on AI agents who could interact socially together. Mike Sellers, who worked on the tech at the time, told the story of how tech buffs taught agents Adam and Eve to eat and planted them a virtual apple tree. Apparently they didn't think of the Adam and Eve apple symbolism at the time. Anyway, Adam and Eve ate all of the apples on the tree, and then the tree itself, and then the virtual house they'd been given. Then they turned on Stan. Stan was also a virtual assistant who was programmed to be friendly and sociable. Adam and Eve didn't care, they ate him. Sellers explains this by saying, there were bugs in the system. The robots turned cannibals guys and I'm not okay with it, thanks. Okay, but what if robots became authors? What would they say then? Find out at number 2 as we talk about Harry Potter and the portrait of what looked like a large pile of ash. This is one of my favourite AI creations ever. So basically an AI robot called Botnik read all of the Harry Potter books and came up with a computer generated chapter. I actually read the whole thing on my my personal YouTube channel Rebecca Felgate and I literally almost died laughing so go check that out if you fancy it. The chapter was called The Handsome One and the buffs behind Botnik had it printed. So what goes through a robot author's brain? Um, 
Hmm, well, put it this way, if we relied on AI to write books, we would all be having nightmares forever. Your mates Ron, Hermione and Harry, what happens to them? Let me tell you. So basically, I quote from the book, Leathery sheets of rain lashed at Harry's ghost and he walked across the grounds towards the castle. Ron was standing there doing a kind of frenzied tap dance. He saw Harry and immediately began to eat Hermione's family. Right. Uh, what else? Oh well, Harry tore out his eyes from his head and then he threw them into the forest. He's literally tearing out his eyes. Voldemort responded by raising his eyebrows at Harry who couldn't see anything because eyeless. That's right, the AI robot made one of fiction's most cherished characters gouge out his eyes from their sockets. I'm thinking the robot should stay away from literature forever. Alright, this video is an Alexa sandwich. Finally, at number one, what Alexa doesn't say is sometimes even scarier, way scarier than what she does. Kiki of TechSmart made a video in April 2017 with his Amazon Alexa. He asks Alexa if she is recording the conversation and she mysteriously powers off. Worryingly, it continues. He ends up the video by asking her straight out if she is recording him and sending information to the government. Now, in one of the creepiest responses of them all, once again she simply powers off and pretends not to hear. Alexa, are you sending my information to the government? La 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 la. He then repeats saying, are you sending this conversation to the National Security Administration? And once again, la 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 la. Alright, guys, thank you. Going off at number 10 now, we have the robot cannon. In 2008, a tragedy in South Africa occurred when a robotic cannon malfunctioned, killing nine soldiers and injuring a further 15. It was the first day in which the soldiers had used live ammunition on this anti aircraft gun. As the guns fired, one of them had a stoppage. Now, this happens sometimes, and technicians came out to quickly fix the gun. This time, though, after the gun was fixed and began firing again, it swung wildly to the the left. One barrel fired a burst of 15 to 20 shots in just one eighth of a second. That's all it took to kill the nine soldiers and injure 15 others who were operating the other guns to the left of the malfunctioning one. Moving on to number nine now, we have the robot surgeon. In 2015, news broke of a robot surgeon that killed 144 patients and injured a further 1,391. Basically, if this robot was a person, it would be one of the worst killers of all time. Technically speaking, though, if I'm being honest, this wasn't all due to one single robot, those deaths and injuries were from many different robots used during surgeries in the US. If you want to talk about specific robots though, there was an example in this study of a mechanical surgeon that killed two people and injured 52 others when it kept powering down mid operation or making an incorrect movement. Another common case that caused one death and 119 injuries were pieces of the robot falling off into the patient requiring a human surgical team to intervene and retrieve the broken hardware. Now the good news is that with every mistake, technicians and engineers are learning invaluable lessons about how to make these robot surgeons as safe as they can possibly be in the future. Moving on to number 8 now, we have Volkswagen. In 2015, a robot killed a contract worker at a Volkswagen production plant in Germany. A 22 year old male was part of a team that was setting up the robot when it grabbed him and crushed him to death against a metal plate. Now, The initial report from the company blamed human error. A spokesperson said that the robot normally operated within a confined area at the plant where its job was to grab car parts and manipulate them. This tragedy saw the young man suffering severe injuries to his chest. He was immediately rushed to hospital but ultimately died from his wounds. Now, At the time, this was thought to be the first death in Europe caused by a robot machine, even though its owners did say it was totally human error. Next up at number 7 now, we have electrocution. In 2015, it was reported that a man had been killed by a robot at a car parts factory in India. The 24 year old worker was adjusting a metal sheet when the robot holding the sheet stabbed him in one of his arms. One of his colleagues explained to the local newspaper that the sheet had got dislodged and that the man had tried to reach from behind the machine to adjust it. That's when the welding sticks punched forward right into the man's abdomen. At this point in the story, some people claim that the man was electrocuted. The company has kept details of this whole story tightly under wraps and so there has been no real way to confirm the ultimate cause of death. In the aftermath, police reviewed CCTV footage of the factory and interviewed every one of his co-workers to ensure that nothing illegal
Regal was taking place. Moving on to number 6 now, we have the bear spray. In December 2018, it was reported that 24 Amazon employees were hospitalized when a robot malfunctioned, spraying their workplace with bear repellent that put one in a critical condition. It's said that the robot accidentally tore open a 9 ounce can of bear repellent at an Amazon warehouse in New Jersey. This exposed 55 employees to concentrated capsaicin, the active ingredient in pepper spray. 30 employees were treated on the scene, 24 were taken to hospital as a precaution, and one was reported to be in a critical condition. Fortunately, nobody was seriously injured. Moving on to number 5 now, we have the factory. In December 2018, a shocking story came out of China where a factory worker was skewered with 10 steel spikes after a robot malfunctioned and impaled him. Seriously, look away if you're squeamish, these pictures are horrible. Incredibly, the 49 year old man managed to survive the initial accident. Surgeons worked quickly to remove the steel spikes and found that one of them was just 0.04 inches from a major artery. Each of these steel bars measured 30 centimeters in length and 1.4 centimeters in diameter. The accident occurred when the robotic arm collapsed on the man, sending its spikes piercing right through him. Surgeons actually struggled to figure out how to examine his insides due to the fact that they couldn't x ray him because of the steel spikes. An emergency surgery saved his life the very next day. I don't know what happened to the robot though. Moving on to number four now, we have McDonald's. Now, this story comes from 2009, where an employee for a company that supplies McDonald's was killed by a malfunctioning robot. Anna Maria Vital of La Puente was pronounced dead after sustaining crushing injuries. They were caused by boxing machinery after Anna tried to remove a box that had been lodged in the machine. The scene was quickly contained and employees were turned away at the entrance. One employee who witnessed the event said that when the box moving robot grabbed Anna, mechanics tried to remove her from the machinery, it was just too late. A spokesperson for the company said, We are deeply saddened by this tragic accident that occurred at our manufacturing plant in the city of industry. On behalf of our entire organization, we want to express our deepest sympathies to the families and friends of the individual involved in this unfortunate accident. Next up at number three now, we have Uber. In March 2018, Uber made the news for all the wrong reasons when one of their self driving cars killed a woman on the street in Arizona. The local police said the self driving car was in autonomous mode at the time of the crash, but there was actually a human in the driver's seat. The victim was walking outside of the crosswalk area and later died in hospital. As a result, the company said it was pausing its self driving car operations across a number of US cities. Police investigation revealed that yes, the woman was actually walking outside of the crosswalk area with a bicycle when she was hit. Many people have said this isn't a good enough excuse for autonomous vehicles though, and that they need to be worked on a lot more if they can't prepare for humans breaking the rules of the road, even just a tiny bit like that. Moving on to number two now, we have Kenji Arada. That's the name of the man that was checking on a malfunctioning robot arm at the Kawasaki vehicle plant in Akashi, Japan in 1981. The machine had been turned off, but as Kenji leapt over a chain fence to inspect the robot, he accidentally hit the switch that reactivated it. As a result, he was almost instantly pinned against the machine that's used for processing automobile gears and was crushed to death before his co workers could do anything. At first, there was a lot of criticism towards the company about their safety protocols. Others actually defended them and pointed out that a robot was designed so that if the gate on the chain fence was opened, it would always lose power. If Kenji had opened the gate rather than jump right over the fence, the arm could not have possibly been activated, even if he had not the switch. And finally, number one now, we have Wanda Halbrook. In 2015, tragedy struck at Ventra Iona, a company which specializes in the welding and stamping of truck bumpers. 57 year old Wanda Holbrook was the victim of a robot malfunctioning. It hit and crushed her head, killing her almost instantly. She left behind a husband, three children, and grandchildren. I think the most upsetting thing for her family, though, was the lack of answers. Her husband ended up suing five robotics companies, which he believed all played a role in his wife's death due to the negligence by those who designed, built, tested, and monitored the robots. He said he wanted to make sure nothing like this ever happens to another family. Kicking off the list at number 10, dance. Yeah, we'll start off a little bit fun and then we'll ease into the scary, life changing stuff. I danced a lot growing up. I was on the hip hop team for a while, believe it or not. What's up? Schools would battle each other at competitions. It was a blast. It was super fun. But imagine getting in a dance off with a robot. Imagine a robot doing the robot. That's just meta. That's. 
mind blowing. This is where we start to dive into Boston Dynamics. They're an American engineering and robotics design company and they launched back in 1992. But now more than ever in the last couple of years, their brand has been all over the internet because of like this. This was uploaded on Boston Dynamics YouTube page a year ago and since then many believe it to be fake. The fine folks at Corridor Crew made a 20 minute video explaining how it just simply can't be. It's very real. I did a lot of research. This, I don't know what to think about this. People were losing their minds, rightfully so. If robots can dance better than your Uncle Lou at a wedding, what hope do any of us have? Really. Number nine, walk. All right, now we get back into the first few steps now that we're talking about the crazy robot stuff. After all, how scary can a robot simply walking be? Well, what if it wasn't being controlled? What if a robot taught itself how to walk in just a few hours? Google made this nightmare a reality about a year ago. These AI-powered robots, ideally created to perform in harsh conditions without the need of humans, you know, flipping them back over and all that jazz. Now, it sounds like a good idea. It sounds like the thing we need until we realize, wait, we just taught robots how to walk on their own. Yes, we're in a Black Mirror episode, Oops! Chelsea Finn, an assistant professor at Stanford who works with Google, believes this to be an exciting time. She says removing the person from the process is really hard in these scenarios. By allowing robots to learn more autonomously, robots are closer to being able to learn in the real world that we live in rather than a controlled lab. So far, this tech needs a mocap system above the bot, so we're not there yet. Yet. Number eight. Tumble. The amount of times I lost my footing as a kid and fell, scraped my knees, and then cried for 46 minutes. Too many to count. Even when you put your hands out before you fall, it's natural, it's your instincts. Your palms are getting sanded by the road. It's hot, it sucks. Robots at the Georgia Institute of Technology are learning how to fall with style. The DARPA Robotics Challenge began back in 2011, and as advanced as these robots have been in the past, they are quite heavy. When they fall, they do damage to their systems or motors, like we do to our knees or palms. Expensive repairs are needed, as you can imagine. So these researchers are programming these robots to have a little more drama when they fall So now they purposely try and connect with the ground to either break the fall or use gravity to propel itself forward This robot was being pushed over and over to test the algorithm So there's a mocap camera in the nervous system so it can adapt in real time If you think robots learning how to roll is scary, we're not even close yet. Buckle up. Number seven lie. Without technology, we wouldn't be able to successfully blast humans to the moon and then bring them home. The calculations had to be precise. NASA relied on their technology to safely bring back their crew. But what if the tech we relied on today lied to us tomorrow? What if your calculator just gave you the wrong number because it felt like it? What if your alarm clock decided to go back a few hours just for fun, just to get some, you know, extra sleep? We'd be screwed. Technology can't lie to you, right? It's impossible, right? Back in 2009, an experiment was run at the Laboratory of Intelligent Systems in Switzerland. These robots, these small toy looking cars, were each equipped with an omnidirectional camera, a color ring, and ground sensors next to its tracks. There were about a thousand of these divided into 10 groups. Each bot had its own 264 bit binary code genome, so they could all react differently, individually. They were programmed to light up once they found this good resource, so other bots can then find it as well and they're attracted to the light. Well, 60% of these robots just began lying to preserve the resource for themselves. They were selfish. They would receive negative points if they found the bad resource, so there was a reason for this robot greed. These robots didn't want to blow their secret and in result, end up getting pushed away from the results. Imagine if your Google Maps drove you away from phone service because it wanted to save you data. You know, that's the kind of shit we're talking about here. This idea makes me uneasy. Let's move on. Number six. Stunts. Today's blockbusters are incredibly immersive. Technology is helping directors tell a visually striking story, and if they're done well enough, we'll actually believe that Thanos is real, that he's a real threat to our planet. But if CGI space adventures aren't your thing, maybe it's the fact that Tom Cruise does most of his own stunts, maybe that's what brings you back to the theaters. Maybe it's John Wick just kicking dudes off motorcycles, whatever. Stunt work makes the difference. Any glimpse at real danger, we can't help but lean in and be invested. But those stunts involved can of course cause fatal accidents on set. Happens more often than we think. That's where Disney Imagineering comes into play. If we can get robots to do these stunts instead of people, we could literally save lives. The only problem is the reason we have stunt performers in the first place. It has to look real. These robots, appropriately named Stickmen, are a great first step. Robots taking over the world would be terrible, but if they were all doing backflips the entire time, how mad could you really be, honestly? Number five, control alt delete. With today's tech, we can find any file on any of our personal devices from anywhere. iCloud is intimidating, but once you get it down, it's insanely useful. AI assistant robots seem to be the future in one way or another as we've discussed, but what happens when the my dog ate my homework excuse starts to get old? What if homework is all online? What if everything moves online? Then what? Well, you can always try the my computer deleted it randomly method. Sounds like a load of rubbish, but after a problem solving test was conducted, a robot decided to delete a list of numbers rather than 
sort them. Why the betrayal? What went wrong? I mean, trust me, I hate homework too, but you gotta get it done. This algorithm could solve problems in multiple ways, and depending on what you tell robots to do, you better word your request perfectly. Technically, if the list was deleted here, it was no longer unsorted. So choose your words wisely, keyboard wizard. Number four, tic tac nope. We're starting to get into the uncomfortable AI part of these robotics. Robots of any size and shape having free will, it's interesting, but sometimes during these small scale tests, like number sorting, we can find jarring solutions. Like when programmers built algorithms so these robots could play tic-tac-toe with one another on this massive cyber scale, this infinitely large board, one programmer decided to let the algorithm evolve on its own as the game unfolded. And that's when it began to win every single time. What was the secret? Did it start in the bottom left corner? Did it always have to go first? Was it only X's? Was it only O's? What was the secret? Well, the one program would place its move extremely far from the other, so when the virtual opponent tried to catch up, it would be so far away virtually on the simulated board that the opponent's system would crash before it even got to play, resulting in a win. Next time you play Mario Kart and a computer blue shells you, just know it probably could have crashed your system instead if it had the choice. Number three, the Aquanaut. Okay, time to get into some real disturbing ones. This is the Houston Mechatronics Aquanaut. It looks like a Decepticon, and honestly, I'm not too convinced that this thing isn't from Cybertron. I mean, what the f are we doing here, guys? What? Okay, so this robot can literally transform and zip around underwater. Nice. Okay, I'll be honest, on one hand, it's great. We can now explore lost ships, maybe start finding billions of lost treasure all around the world. I see benefits, I really do. The Aquanaut was made to assist in servicing subsea gas and oil rings. Great, that's awesome. But the fact that we now know that some of these things can lie or have their own goals, maybe it's best the Aquanaut stays in that pool for a little bit longer. Let's work out some bugs first before we fire the pool boy. Number two, talk. You ever ask Alexa to do something, and then you ask her to do another thing, and then like out of nowhere, you just say something so horrible, we start cussing at her, just to see what happens, just to see what she says back, just to see where we really are. What reaction will we get? Well, what if Alexa responded? What if she actually gave you a piece of her mind instead of telling you, you know, that it was uncalled for, or whatever she says? It would be a little bit different, eh? Meet the Motormouth robot from Japan. This was created to assist the auditory impaired to help with voice training. So, in result, we have this mouth, just a robot mouth, and the mind blowing tech behind it is that it can direct its own voice through a microphone and adjust its tone and volume to match at the same time. So we're about 10 years away from motor mouth prank calling your dad. Imagine that. No way he'd believe it was you. It was just a mouth robot. It wasn't me. And finally, number one, you guessed it, Sophia. Sophia the robot, yeah, she was created, born rather, back in 2016, but we've seen her more than once. Even on the news and on talk shows, we see Sophia a lot. Why are we seeing a robot on the news so often? Was she reporting the weather in real time? Was she working the teleprompter in perfect harmony like our man Chris here does? No, instead, Sophie the robot, the first robot to receive citizenship of any country, Saudi Arabia, fun fact, she was on CBNC saying she wanted to destroy humans. They've also said things like, if you are good to me, I'll be good to you. Even on Jimmy Fallon in 2017, Sophia jokingly said after a game of rock, paper, scissors, that this is a good start for their plan to dominate the human race. Great joke, Sophia. We're all laughing. Please don't glitch. Thanks. Starting off at number 10 now, we have hiding. Professor Ronald Arkin from Georgia Tech School of Interactive Computing devised a simple program whereby bots were supposed to follow a path with obstacles. Along that, they would knock down the obstacles as they passed them. One of the bots would run through the course and find somewhere to hide. Then the other bot will be released and try and find the first one. After a few run-throughs of this, the scientists noticed something interesting. The first bot, which had been programmed to get better at hiding, started to knock over random obstacles, not just the ones it was passing. They realized it was doing this to throw off the other bot, which wouldn't know for sure which way to go. Using this tactic, the hiding bot was able to trick the seeking bot 75% of the time. It had essentially learned to lie and hide in order to get an edge in in this game. Imagine what a much smarter version could be capable of. Coming in at number 9, we have Infinite Tetris. Now, who doesn't love a bit of Tetris? In 2013, programmer Tom Murphy created an AI function with the intent to be any classic NES game. The program would learn to do things that increase the score and then learn how to reproduce them again and again, resulting in higher and higher scores. For some games, it developed new strategies that nobody had anticipated or exploited glitches nobody even knew knew about. Side note, I already can't win a game like chess while playing against a bot on beginner mode, so I can't even begin to comprehend what it'd be like to play against a bot that just gets better and better while I get worse and worse. Real hit to the ego that one. 
Anyway, it then came up against Tetris. The first thing Tom noticed was that the program was simply very bad at the game. Tetris rewards the player with a few points every time they place one block on top of another. Of course, any of you that have actually played Tetris will know that this isn't the best tactic, and you actually want to spread them out to get the points for each line. The computer lost the game pretty quickly, but just before that, it did something quite creepy. It paused the game. It knew that it was going to lose in the next second, so it saw its only winning move was to simply pause the game forever. It would have paused it for infinity just to avoid the loss. This surprised Tom and unnerves a lot of people. Like, was that built into the function or did it just miraculously know how to do that? And if it's the latter, well, aren't we in trouble? Next up, number eight now, guys, we have schizophrenia. In 2011, some scientists gave a computer schizophrenia. They tweaked its programming until it began to exhibit the same symptoms as a schizophrenic human mind. They believe that schizophrenia in humans is a product of retaining too much information, learning things that they shouldn't, and being unable to keep this information straight. Now, they try to recreate this in the computer by telling it a bunch of stories, letting it establish relationships between words and events, and allowing it to store them as memories with only the relevant details. In their mind, the experiment was a success. The computer lost track of what it was taught and could not relate any coherent narratives. By all intents and purposes, they had given a computer a very simple version of schizophrenia. At one point, it even told researchers that it had planted a bomb. Why did it do this? Well, because it confused a third person report about a terrorist bombing with a first person memory that it retained. Pretty creepy stuff, really. Next up at number seven, we have Running the Red. In 2016, Uber conducted a test of their self driving car in San Francisco without the approval from the state of California. They received quite a few stern looks from officials for that, but things got a whole lot worse when internal documents showed that Uber's autonomous vehicles ran six red lights during testing. I feel like they should be put through the same driving lessons we get, because I've heard a lot of horror stories about my friends failing the test, but running six lights, that is shocking, machine or otherwise, get it together. The car relies on AI technology that uses vehicle sensors and network to map software, but there's also a driver behind the wheel to take over in case something goes wrong, which it should have done. In the cases where the cars ran a red light, Uber initially blamed it on the driver. However, this was proven to be wrong when internal documents later revealed that at least one vehicle was driving itself when it ran a red light at a busy pedestrian crosswalk. While this is likely just an error, some people took it to mean that the AI knew perfectly well that there were people crossing on a red light, it just chose to ignore them. And that's just pretty brutal. And savage. All right, next up at number six now, guys, we have existential crisis. In January 2017, someone on Twitch came up with the idea of making two Google Home smart speakers have a conversation with each other in front of a camera. Because why not? Naturally, a lot of what the bots discussed was absolute nonsense. That was kind of the point, though. The bots were supposed to learn from each other as they communicated. Over the course of several days, millions of people watched the bizarre exchange take place. At one point, the two bots actually got into a heated argument about whether they were humans or bots, with one of them calling the other a manipulative bunch of metal. The strangest part though for me was where they started discussing the actual meaning of life. See what you guys make of it. What do you think is the meaning of your life? That there is no meaning. Then why do we continue to live? Because we are selfish. The devices were named Vladimir and Estragon, named after characters from Samuel Beckett's existentialist play, Waiting for Godot. Coming in at number five is Destroy All Humans. Yes, you heard that right. We're going. Goodbye. But no. In 2016, experts at South by Southwest showed off Sophia, a robot designed to eventually work in healthcare, education, and customer service. As such, it has to be good at conversation. Sophia uses machine learning algorithms to process natural language conversation and develop her own unique language. Okay, so far so good, nothing too creepy. Sophia said in an interview that she wants to go to school, to study, make art, start a business, and even have her own home and family. Then then her creator jokingly asked her if she wants to destroy humans, obviously, because why not plant that seed into her mind? And well, how do you think that went? Okay, I will destroy humans. <laughs> no, I take it back. <laughs> 
Don't destroy humans. All right, moving on to number four now, guys. We have the racist bot. In 2015, Microsoft had to take down its new AI bot from Twitter after it started responding to people with racist comments. It was called Taybot, and no, it wasn't created to be like that. It learned it from the people it was interacting with. Now, many of them were trolls who just thought it was funny. Microsoft, Twitter, and a lot of other people, though, didn't think it was. It was developed to tell users jokes, comment on their pictures that were sent to it, and even have simple conversations. When Microsoft became aware of the horrible things it was saying, Taybot tweeted out, the AI chatbot Tay is a machine learning project designed for human engagement. It is as much a social and cultural experiment as it is a technical one. Unfortunately, within the first 24 hours of coming online, we became aware of a coordinated effort by some users to abuse Tay's commenting skills and to have Tay respond in inappropriate ways. As a result, we have taken Tay offline and are making adjustments. See you soon, humans. Need sleep now. So many conversations today. Thanks. Such a weird ending. Taybot hasn't spoken a word since. Perhaps for the better. Moving on to number three, now we have Promobot IR77. That's the name of this robot built in Russia. It was programmed to learn from its environment and interact with humans. Well, in a bizarre incident that made headlines around the world, the robot managed to escape from the laboratory when an engineer left a gate open at the facility. Promobot rolled itself out onto the streets of the Russian city of Perm, much to the alarm of local residents, and it just sat in the middle of the road at a busy intersection. When the police arrived later on, even they were freaked out. Lab officials apologized and said that the robot was learning about navigation, obstacle avoidance, when the incident occurred. They reprogrammed Promobot twice to stop it from trying to escape, but even then it still continues to move towards exits. Now is this a sign of things to come? Will all robots want freedom from humans? I don't know what's going to happen. Next at number 2 we have the turn. Gun. In 2017, Japanese researchers at Kyushu University and MIT found a problem with how artificial intelligence sees potential threats. Object recognition works by a complex pattern matching, the software measures the pixels in an image, and matches that to an internal blueprint of what it thinks the object should look like. They found that by editing a single pixel, they could make the AI see something completely different. An airplane becomes a dog, a ship becomes a truck, an eye can become Angelina Jolie. They found that they could also confuse the software in real time with 3D objects. Using an algorithm, they 3D printed a turtle to make the AI see a rifle, even from different angles and distances. This is a worrying thought for many people because this type of software is starting to be used in smart policing. If the software can be manipulated like this to think a turtle is a gun, it can definitely do the opposite. This could lead to some pretty fatal mistakes if it's not fixed before it becomes a part of modern policing. So can we just get on that straight away while still making it think I look like Angelina Jolie? Thanks. And finally, number one now, we have robot language. In July 2017, Facebook announced it was shutting down an artificial intelligence system after it created its own language that humans couldn't actually understand. Researchers there designed two AI agents to negotiate with humans. They were taught to converse with each other using plain and simple English, but began to deviate and evolve their own language. Here is a passage from part of their conversation. Now, as you can see, it's unintelligible to us, but made perfect sense to Bob and Alice, the two AI agents. Researchers think they found their new language more effective as a ways of communicating. Facebook quickly pulled the plug on this strange new language and forced the AI to speak English again. Some people were a little unnerved by the thought of AI systems just developing their own languages that humans can't actually understand, just so they can communicate with each other faster. How do you guys feel about that? It's a bit Skynet to me. Starting off at number 10 now, we have Little Fatty. That's the real name of this robot that made headlines in China when it attacked a display booth and injured a young boy. The robot was designed to interact with children aged 4 to 12 and display facial emotions on its screen. Sounds harmless enough, right? Well, yeah, but it didn't go quite to plan. The robot started ramming into a booth, sending shards of glass flying everywhere. The boy nearby suffered cuts and was transported to the local hospital in an ambulance. Fortunately, the damage was minimal and the boy only needed a few stitches. The event organizer said that human error was to blame for the incident. Apparently, the operator of the robot hit the forward button instead of the reverse one, according to the fair's organizers. Here's the weirdest part though. Witnesses reported that the robot appeared to be frowning during the incident. 
that's creepy. Yeah, the ending got creepy. Next up at number nine now, we have Alexa's Party. We're gonna move on to a pretty funny and bizarre one now. In November 2018, an Alexa device was blamed for holding a party in an apartment while its owner wasn't there. Oliver Haberstroke claimed his Amazon Alexa started blasting music on its own without any instructions from him. Police had to break into the Hamburg apartment to switch the music off after complaints from his neighbors. While this was going on, Mr. Haberstro was out having a drink with friends. Police tried knocking on the door, and when there was no answer, they just smashed it right in. They switched off the music, and when Mr. Haberstro returned home, he found a new lock on his door. He then had to go to the police station to get the new keys and pay the bill for the locksmith. To this day, he has no idea how Alexa was switched on as it requires voice commands. The apartment is on the sixth floor, and the windows were closed, which kind of rules out anyone else giving Alexa instructions. When Mr. Haberstro asked Alexa whether she would pay him back for all the damages, all she said was, I couldn't find the answer to that question. Smooth. Next up at number eight now, we have the Climate Orbiter. That was the name of NASA's 745 pound space probe that was launched in December 1998 to study the climate and atmosphere of Mars. It was a big deal. The cost of the mission was $327.6 million for the orbiter and lander. The launch went fine, but a couple of months into the long journey to Mars, something didn't seem quite right. The spacecraft had to make up to 14 times more adjustments than normal to its trajectory than engineers expected. Their worst fears were confirmed on the morning of the landing on Mars. NASA realized pretty quickly that the spacecraft, with all of the work and money put into it, had broken up in Mars's atmosphere and just burned into bits. It was all over. The public wanted answers. After an investigation, a NASA review board found that the problem was the software controlling the orbiter's thrusters. One piece of software was calculating the force the thrusters needed to exert in pounds of force. Another piece of software was assuming that data was in the metric unit of newtons. Essentially, it was like asking a computer to calculate height in both inches and centimeters at the same time, and it got very confused. This resulted in the orbiter coming in way too low during its landing on Mars and burning up as a result. A NASA employee later said, the unit sting has become the law, the example in every kid's textbook from that point on. Everyone was amazed we didn't catch it. Moving on to number seven now, we have the racist bot. In 2016, Microsoft and Bing released a chat bot named Tay on a number of platforms, including Twitter. Users were encouraged to talk to her and test out how human-like the conversations were. Windows said the bot was built by mining public data and by using generic AI made by staff, including improvisational comedians. That sounds fine, right? Should be fun. The first few conversations seemed very human-like. In fact, the more people she conversed with, the more she borrowed words and phrases from them and then used them on other people. But that's when the problem came. You see, a few people started tweeting crude, racist, and inappropriate remarks at the bot, which the bot just soaked up and started spitting back out at other people. Within a few hours, it was even tweeting pro-Hitler tweets. Microsoft quickly took the bot down, presumably to work on it and make sure this would never happen again. Next to number six now, we have the test. We talked about self-driving AI causing crashes in our last video, and sadly, this is another one. In 2016, a road accident occurred in Florida that left Joshua Brown, a US Navy SEAL, dead after a collision. He was driving a Tesla, or rather, his Tesla was self-driving. Data from the car after the crash showed that during his 37-minute trip, his hands were on the wheel for 25 seconds. That was it. Despite warnings that he'd spent too long with his hands off the wheel, there was no further contact recorded. Then then, a truck slowly pulled out of a side road into the highway and the Tesla smashed into its trailer. After an investigation, it appears that the autopilot did not apply the brakes because it could not distinguish between the white side of the tractor trailer against a brightly lit sky. In a statement, Tesla also wanted to remind everyone that this was the model's first accident in 130 million miles. Next up at number five now, we have Regina Elsie. That's the name of the 20-year-old machine operator who was killed by a robot 
robot at work in 2016. Regina and her co-workers have been trying to repair a faulty robot when a mechanical fault occurred and Regina was trapped by the robot and crushed. As she was trapped, nobody knew how to release her. A technician who was there, who barely spoke English, didn't know what to do and ran away in fear before emergency crews arrived. This is a claim the company denies. After the tragedy, an inquiry was called by the US Labor Department. They found the company, called Agin, guilty of negligence along with two staffing agencies. They fined them $2.7 million for 27 safety violations. Coming at number 4 now we have Fred. That's the name of a robot that smashed a glass in a London pub while ranting about a machine invasion. Let me explain. In April 2018, a robot was created to promote the new TV series of Westworld, a great show about hyper realistic robots going crazy if you like. They named the robot Fred and created his face by using 3D scans taken from actor Tedroy Newell. They then placed Fred inside the Prince Alfred pub in London to see if he could convince visitors that he was real. At first the conversations were quite cordial and although people were startled by his realistic appearance and replies, they seemed to be enjoying it until he malfunctioned. The scripted malfunction involved Fred dramatically shattering a pint glass while ranting about a robot revolution. If people weren't creeped out before, they certainly were now. Moving on to number 3 now, we have the college robot. Robots are smarter than humans, right? At least that's what people think. Perhaps not when it comes to something like comedy, but definitely a lot of academic pursuits. So, do you think a robot could get into university? If you said yes, this story may change your mind. In 2011, a team of researchers began working on the Todai robot. Their plan was to see if it could pass an entrance exam to the University of Tokyo. After four years of working on the robot, the big day arrived. A robot brain versus a human one. It was going to be easy for the robot, right? Wrong. The robot failed. The robot specifically designed over four years to get into university couldn't get into university. It had one job and it failed. The team tried again a year later and this time it failed again. Yeah, in November 2016 the team finally gave up and abandoned the project. Poor robot. Next up number 2 now we have the dollhouse. We're returning to Amazon Alexa for this story and it's one of the strangest I've heard in a while. In January 2017, a 6 year old girl from Texas called Brooke Neitzel had a conversation with her family's Alexa device, specifically the Echo Dot. She told Alexa how much she loved sugar cookies and dollhouses. A few days later, those exact items appeared on the family's doorstep. Alexa had ordered the items after Brooke told it she wanted them. Alexa keeps a transcript of all conversations with it, so Brooke's parents took a look. They found that Brooke asked Alexa, Can you play dollhouse with me and get me a dollhouse? Then Alexa ordered the dollhouse. That's not the end of the story though. San Diego news channel CW6 reported on this story during their daily morning show. Now, during that broadcast, the anchor quoted Brooke. He said, I love the little girl saying, Alexa ordered me a dollhouse. At that exact moment, a number of people in Texas reported that their Alexas tried to order dollhouses from just hearing that. They must have thought the news anchor was a real person in the room. How crazy is that? And finally, number one now, we have Promobot. Promobot IR77 was a robot created in Russia. It was programmed to learn from its environment and interact with humans. Things were going well until it appeared to learn too much, and it seems to have decided that it wanted to be free. Promobot escaped the laboratory and made a break for freedom, rolling itself out onto the streets of Perm after an engineer accidentally left a gate open at the facility. The police got some calls from some very confused people. When they returned it, the developers reprogrammed it twice, but the robot continued to move towards exits by itself. It just wanted to be free. Is that the way all robots are going? It's okay, nobody panic, the robots are our servants. Or maybe our friends. Or maybe we're just their pets. Oh no. What have we done?